Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. So today I wanted to go ahead and give you an update on some of the videos I've been working on. Um, the first was the 2004 Yamaha FZ1. You probably remember it from here. I rebuilt the engine on it, replacing third gear in the transmission. Um, it's on hold right now because I've been waiting to do some paint on it and the weather's just been too cold. So hopefully I can get back on that project pretty soon. The next one is the Honda CB350F. Um, you remember we pretty much finished the engine on it, probably in the last episode you just saw. But I'm waiting on some parts for the frame and some other things to continue on since it's a full custom cafe build. This brings us to this engine. This is a Nissan RB20 DET. Um, I got it for a project I'm building right now that's my own personal project. It's going to be this car right here. A 1974 Triumph TR6. Um, this car comes with a 2.5 liter straight 6 from the factory. Um, you can see it here. It's pretty old school design, not a lot of power. I think maybe 120 to 140 horsepower, so really slow. But overall, this car was in great shape. Um, it didn't have a lot of rust, even though it came from Minnesota. I guess it was only a summer car. The interior's in, I mean, it's in decent shape. There's not a lot of rust. It's going to need all new upholstery, of course. But I decided I wanted to put a little more power in it. So I went with the Nissan RB20 DT. First, because I got a good price on it. Um, but overall, you can see that this car is in great shape and should make a good home to it. So this brings us to this engine right here. This is the RB20 DET. Um, I got a great deal on it. I know the RB25s are more popular because they can make more power, but 300 to 400 horsepower is going to be plenty in this car. Overall, this engine was actually in great shape. It really didn't need a lot, but I didn't know that until I'd already broken it down. So I got decided to go ahead and do rings, uh, bearings, pretty much everything else to finish updating it. So uh, let's get started with that. We'll go ahead and start um, putting the main bearings in and measuring the gaps for those right here. And I hope you follow along. Thanks for watching. Okay, so the first thing that needs to be done to put the engine back together is install the main bearings. Before I do that, though, I need to make sure that all of these journals are completely lint-free. So I'm going to use this painter's tack cloth here to make sure there's no dust on there. The reason for that is any dust on the bearing surfaces might throw off my readings with the plastic gauges. The first bearing I'm going to install is the center thrust bearing here. You can tell it's the center bearing because it has these areas on the outside that take up the thrust of the crankshaft. We can tell it's the top bearing because it has the oil channel here in the center that helps uh, direct oil onto the bearing surface from the galleries in the engine. On the bottom end of this engine, this is the only one out of the package that really matters where it goes because of the thrust bearings. You know it's the center bearing, so I'm going to go ahead and install that now. The rest of the bearings are going to install exactly the same way as the center one, um, so I'm going to go ahead and continue installing those now. Now I'm going down making sure that the bearings are centered in the journals, making sure one side's not sticking up higher than the other. Then I'm going to go ahead and wipe them down one more time with the tack cloth to make sure there's no dust in them before we start doing the bearing measurements. So I'm going to do the same thing to the crankshaft here off camera. I'm going to wipe down all the journals on it, making sure there's no dust or lint on any of the bearings that might throw off my plastic gauge readings here in a moment. Now I'm going to go ahead and set the crankshaft into the engine here very carefully. I want to make sure not that I'm not going to ding any of the journals on the sharp edges or anything like that, so I'm just going to carefully set it down in here. Okay, so up next I'm going to go ahead and move to the crank girdle. Um, on a regular, more standard engine, those would be the main caps on this one. They're all made into one, as you'll see here in a second. Okay, so now we're going to do the exact same thing to the crank girdle, which would be the main caps on a normal engine, um, as we did on the upper end. So I'm going to go ahead and start cleaning all the lint out of these and get ready to put the bearings in here in a second. Now I'm going to go ahead and start wiping the bearings down and begin to install those starting at one end. It's going to be exactly the same here as with the top side with the thrust bearing going in the middle. Now 
now that the bearings are installed here in the girdle, I'm going to go back and wipe down each one with the tack cloth to make sure there's no dust or lint or anything that might throw off my reading here on the bearings. Okay, so now it's time to go ahead and start measuring the clearance um, from the crank to the bearings. So I'm using plasti gauge here. You can see it that you might can see it here. It's a little bit hard to see. Um, it's, it's a little piece of wax or plastic. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but basically each little piece just sits on the bearing right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this small piece off and set it on this bearing. Be careful to make sure it stays right on top of the bearing where you need it. Then we'll go ahead and keep putting it on the rest of them the same way. Um, one thing to be careful here, I'm probably gonna go ahead and turn the crank uh, a little bit because there's the oiling hole there. I don't wanna make sure that there's no oiling holes wherever I'm trying to put the plastic gauge because that would that would throw off the reading somewhat, especially there in the middle. So now I'm going to go ahead and put the crank girdle on now that I have all six plasti gauges in place. Be careful bringing this in as well. Be sure not to ding the crank. Um, then just go ahead and set it in there. This one's a little more difficult because it doesn't like to seat as easily and usually I have to use one of the bolts to get it down all the way. I'm just checking to make sure that none of those move because it kind of popped over to one side on me. So now I'm going to go ahead and put some oil on each one of the holes to make sure I get an accurate torque reading across the girdle. I already have the crank bolts or yeah, main bolts sitting in some oil to lubricate the threads to make sure I get that accurate torque. And I'm going to go ahead and just put a little bit of oil on each one of these um, top surfaces to help reduce friction and again get an accurate torque measurement. So now that I have the oil on all the holes, I'm going to go ahead and start putting the bolts into the respective holes. Three of them are going to be a little bit longer. That one, they're going to go right there next to the oil pickup. Then the other two long ones are going to go on the end next to the rear main seal. All the rest of them are the same length and I'll just go ahead and put each one of those in their respective holes. Now that all the bolts are in their holes, I'm going to go ahead and use my impact here. It's a 17 millimeter on its lowest setting to gently run these bolts down just so I don't have to do it by hand. Now that all the bolts are in, I'm going to go ahead and start torquing these down um, to 50 newton meters. Starting in the middle, they're 17 millimeter, like I said earlier. Um, so I'm going to start here in the middle and work my way outward. I'm going to go ahead and torque these middle ones somewhat down to help pull the girdle down because it doesn't always like to like I mentioned earlier. These aren't torqued down all the way yet. I'm doing it two stages so probably about 30 newton meters on the first round to make sure they're down then I'm going to go back starting in the middle again working my way outward to get them all down to 50 newton meters. Now that they're torqued down to 30 newton meters I'm going to go ahead and torque them down to 50 starting again in the center and working my way out. Now that the crank's all the way torqued down, the plasti gauge should have been squished um, to the appropriate amount so I can go ahead and take a reading. So now it's time to go ahead and take the crank back off. Removing the crank girdle is the opposite of installing it, so you want to start on the outside, loosening those first and working your way to the middle. Now I'm just going to use my little electric impact here to remove the bolts the rest of the way out. Now I'm going to go ahead and remove the girdle again. Sometimes it takes a little bit of a pry with the end of a ratchet or something like that to get it to pop loose. We'll 
Okay, so you can see the squish right here and right here where the plasti gauge smushed out. So that's the area we're gonna be reading with the paper. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut off a piece of this paper so I can easier look at it on the crank. So here it is, you can see the thousands of an inch there. So I'm comparing the width of the squished out plasti gauge to the numbers that are on the, the guide here. Um, so I'm looking for around two thousandths. Um, it's actually a smidge under that, which is totally fine for this engine. So I'm gonna go ahead and check the rest of the bearings now. All right, so I've measured them all and it looks like they're all in spec. So that's great and we can continue on with the engine build now.